Anybody in here? <laughs> Jesus H. Macy, Miranda Cosgrove, would you get a look at the state of this place? I mean, it's no wonder Quiznos went out of business. Would you believe that this specific location just shut down this morning? I guess it's as good a place as any. Um, alright. The year is 2004. You're homesick from school because your adolescent chimp brain decided it'd be a good idea to cover your cosmic brownies in a purple easy squirt and Capri Sun garnish. You're sitting way too close to the TV, burning your retinas and gawking at the quintessential e-girl who will forever alter your taste in women when all of a sudden, it cuts to commercial. We love these songs! Cause they are good to us! The Quiznos songs! Horribly compressed JPEG of a Quiznos restaurant consumes the background, and two rodent like varmints come out and begin singing about their love for the aforementioned sandwich chain. They got a pepper bar! One wields an acoustic guitar and a pirate hat, the other, a bowler derby hat and the voice of an angel. And from that point on, your life will never be the same. Cities crumble under the sheer weight of humanity allowing something like this to happen. Nearly two decades later, and we are still seeking to rebuild everything we lost in that faithful year. And the fact of the matter is, we've all collectively failed as a species when we open the gates of hell and let in its deepest and darkest creations. The Spunk Monkeys. <laughs> but what exactly were they? And why were they, for that matter? Well, my dear child, that's exactly what we'll be answering on today's episode of Strange History. The early days of marketing, as we've seen, were nothing but a glorified arms race. A pissing match to see who could create the biggest, baddest, and most bombastic set pieces with the sort of CGI that would make a Marvel fan spit out their Funko Pops. During my chat with Frank Sims, the voice of the Honeycomb Craver and the Kool-Aid Man, he let me in on some trade secrets regarding a certain Gushers commercial. Like how the technology and the sound design behind it could rival some big budget films of the time. Hell, even the Craver commercials were impressive from a technological standpoint. However, when niche internet culture began to hijack the 747 that is our collective of consciousness and began dictating what we found funny and marketable, ad agencies would begin to use this approach to aid their clients in selling their products. You see where I'm going with this? And that's where the story of the Spung Monkeys begin. You see, originally the gruesome twosome were created as just your standard early 2000s internet meme, destined to live on funny junk between a gif of a laughing baby and a funny road sign edited in Photoshop. This lab experiment gone wrong was made for the sake of creating the 2003 certified banger that is We Love the Moon. We like the moon! Created by an animator named Joel Veach, I hope I'm saying his name right, and his brother Alex, the name Spung Monkeys was derived from the term Spung, which was coined by the British digital art forum Beta in the early 2000s. Which the term Spung, meaning adding terrifyingly oversized eyeballs to things that absolutely did not need them. I'm pretty sure we're all in agreement that the early days of internet culture were truly innocent. I mean, now we find this funny. Pretty good. Obviously, they're not monkeys, per se. They've been described as gerbils with birth defects, Mr. Potato Rats, drug addled castrato hamsters, I don't know what that is, and even hell lemurs. I'd wager to say that all of those things are accurate. These critters were pretty par for the course for Joel, as most of his creations centered around goofy looking creatures singing and dancing to songs that you'd find on the formative years of the internet. Joel himself was no stranger to media and internet meme culture, having made a plethora of animations and even working for Britain's Channel 4. He was also an avid user on the aforementioned forum site Beta, in which he shared many of his works stemming from his website rathergood.com. His works quickly spread around the internet and earned their due giggles, but as for the Spung Monkeys, however, they made their way into an email sent to an art director of a certain marketing agency. Ty Harper, the art director, received an email linking to We Love the Moon and had a good laugh at the levitating gore potatoes. So much so that it was forcibly branded into his memory as I'm sure it was branded into ours shortly thereafter. Ty's marketing agency was the Martin Agency, based in Richmond, Virginia, who just so happened to receive a request from a massive, at the time, sandwich chain. They were interested in an ad campaign that was both unusual yet interesting. They wanted an agency that wasn't afraid to take a risk with their marketing, and old Ty the Tasmanian Tiger had a Vietnam War flashback to the hate crime that hit his inbox. So Ty had the bright idea of taking Quiznos and the Spung Monkeys and making them fit together like a glove. But how do you do that when the glove is the one that got OJ acquitted? Quiznos wanted risks. I don't know what's riskier than exposing the early 2000s world to niche internet culture. I mean, those poor bastards just got over Martha Stewart going to prison. And now this? The Martin Agency then reached out to the Spung Boys original creator to strike a deal, and Joel loved the 
idea so much so that he threw a knapsack over his brother Alex, tossed him into the baggage compartment of an airplane, and the pair traveled to the US to help them make the ad. Keep in mind, this was a $25 million pitch, right? For that kind of scratch, you'd expect some like pyrotechnics, maybe a Paris Hilton lookalike rubbing her butt grease on an El Camino, maybe Snoop Dogg in the back, paradising and drop it like it's hot to like a sandwich song or something. I don't know, it was 2004. But with the inherent shocking simplicity of what Joel had already created, the Martin agency essentially wanted him to stick with that. And stick with that, he did. Joel and his brother Alex took the We Love the Moon song, paradized it like Snoop Dogg would have, and called it a day. And in that fateful year of 2004, the ad aired to an astonishing level of consumer feedback. I don't even know which way the quiz knows it. The company had received tens of thousands of calls and emails after the spot had aired, with customers giving their two cents on the commercial. Remarks ranging from, what are those creatures? You gotta be kidding me, and this is genius advertising. The epitome of mixed reception. But all in all, their plan worked. And this was huge for quizzes, because I mean, they set out to have an ad that was dramatic enough to get people talking, and as I said earlier, they really wanted to take a risk because they had a much smaller ad budget than their competitors had, and were willing to fart out onto like a Super Bowl commercial. And I think it's also good to mention that this is not Quiznos' first foray into sick yet clever marketing. I mean, only a year earlier did they have Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory on his knees giving the sloppy guck job to the teat of a she-wolf to extract her mother's milk, which I heard is a true plot of young Sheldon. I've never seen the show. Please confirm in the comments. After the Spung Monkeys, however, Quiznos was no longer the subway that didn't have Jared Fatpants Fogel. No, now, they were the subway that had sentient dandruff with the gift of music. They were instantly cooler. They were like the kid in your class who had a zoo and when everyone else had the iPod. Granted, Jared Fogel wasn't exactly like a high bar. But I mean, come on, it was 2004. This is before Jared Fogel went to prison for, uh, tax fraud? <laughs> I don't remember what Jared Fogel went to prison for. Now that I think of, oh God, somebody's breaking in. No, somebody else is breaking in. I gotta go hide. 2004 was the worst time in human history. I already did that. So you uh, already talked about the spung monkeys? Y yeah, I was about to discuss the aftermath of the commercial going live, but to be honest- I'm Okay, 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 shut the fuck up, guy who I know is not even remotely as handsome as I am. I'll take it from here. No, it's okay, I'll just sit here and play craps with the roaches. All right, Jonesy, you go first. The ad itself was so jarring that Joel himself would go on CNN to discuss his thought process behind using his advanced graphic design degree to create a commercialized brain tumor, stating that the idea should be more important than the way it's presented visually. And also, the juxtaposition of those kind of rough graphics on really glossy food shots and serious voiceover really tickles me. It makes me laugh a lot. It makes him laugh a lot. I gotta commend the guy. He's managed to create something so nightmarishly memorable that even if you've never eaten a Quiznos, chances are you've heard of these levitating kidney stones and thought, that shit makes me hungry enough to get Quiznos once I finish smashing these memories out of my head with a brick. Throughout 2004, there were four variations of the Spung Monkeys campaign ad, which may be the shortest lived mascot covered here in this specific Quiznos branch. The first variation being the infamous Santa Fe chicken spot with the climactic, we got a pepper bar exclamation. That still gets bumped in nightclubs to this very day. The other three were very similar with changes to the lyrics, but didn't feature a pepper bar, so I couldn't give less of a shit about them and wish ill things on anyone who remembers them. The purpose of a commercial is to bring people to your business, to try out the tasty carbs you have on tap. This applies to any business. Now you know why car dealerships often have free bagels and divorce lawyers fire up waffle makers when discussing how impossible it will be to ever see your children again. The Spung Monkeys commercials did away with the fluff and focused solely on drilling the product into your brain with a jarringly memorable presentation. They are tasty. They are crunchy. They are warm because they fucking toast them. God, I want to fuck a sandwich. However, this didn't exactly pan out for the sandwich chain. They decided to do away with the Spung Monkeys and move on to more out there marketing, which is fine. But in the years to come, they would get their asses handed to them by a recession and Subway's $5 footlong and Jared personally installing toasters into every Subway location, meaning Quiznos had to quit Zos while they were ahead. <laughs> Even with Jared Kidler Diddler Fogel getting arrested for preferring fresh, never frozen chicken children. Quiznos mediocre slop breads couldn't compete with Subway's incredible we have a bathroom the homeless can use anytime day or night campaign. Really you shouldn't have put a lock on those doors Quiznos, but you can only blame yourself for that one. Jonesy you son of a bitch you were robbing me blind. Oh, I gotta go finish up this sandwich video. As for Joel, in rather good, he continued his works and even found some success with one of his shows being picked up by Netflix of all things. So things were looking pretty good in the post Spung Monkeys era for Joel and I'm sure his brother Alex. Can't say the same for Quiznos though. <laughs>
Uh, God. This place kind of stinks, but it's no secret that even though the Spung Monkeys were short-lived, they left a more than lasting impression on all of us. I mean, we can never forget them no matter how hard we try, and believe me, I've tried. We close our eyes and we still see them, almost as if they never left. They're still out there, floating around on the little toasted sub in the sky. In fact, I think I see them. Yeah, it's almost as if I still see them. <laughs> Oh wait, no, that's actually them. I was just singing your praises. Oh god. Guys, come on, I, I didn't mean it when I called you levitating gore potatoes. It was just as being funny, you know, just... A little, bit of, just a little bit of a little jab, playful jab, you know? You guys can call me anything you want. I, I won't be mad. You guys have been off the air for like... Oh, a long time. You just, just, just bring me back here, fellas, please. Oh, God. <laughs>